Koh lähti. Praise the Lord. Nossa Guði. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a joy to be here. Það er mikið gleði að fá að vera hérna. I so enjoy worship. Ég naut lofgjörna mjög mikið. It is always just amazing when God's people come together. Það er svo frábært að sjá þegar fólk Guðs kemur saman. For no other purpose than to worship him. Að eða eina tilgjörnum að koma að lofa hann. He tends to show up. Hann á það til að mæta svæðið. And touch our hearts. Og snertum við hjörtum okkar. Hallelujah. So thank you. Worship team for availing yourself to God that way. At one point, and I forget, it may have been during Let It Rain. I could hear um, a, a kind of a warrior's beat in the heavenlies. And as I began to pray, I heard the Lord speak. Og þegar ég byrjaði að byrja þá heyrði ég drottinn tala. And he was angry. Og hann reyður. He said, I am godly jealous over these people. Og hann sagði, ég er með guðlega öfundsíki gagvart þessu fólki. He said, these are my people and I am jealous over them. Þetta er fólk mitt og ég er öfundsjúkur. He says, but I cover them. En ég hil þau. I protect them. Ég venda þau. And I hold them. Og ég held utan þau. There was such a fierce love that I felt God had for his people that gather here. I'm scared for anybody who would come against it. He loves you that way. Hallelujah. I bring you greetings from the United States of America. I emailed over this morning, they're still there. <laughs> Just thought I'd check. <laughs> it is always a joy to be in Iceland. Even with the weather. <laughs> but it is a joy to be here. Uh, Ron and Ann both are, are family to me. Ron og Anne Bóta eru fjölskylda fyrir mér. They've watched me grow up in the faith. Þau hafa hort að mig vaxa upp í trúnni. And if you think I'm weird, blame them. Og ef þú finnst ég verið eitthvað skrítið, þá kennið þeir þeim um það. Hallelujah. And a big thanks to Didi and Benedict and the kids for hosting me. Og takk hella að Dagný og Benedict og krakkan er að hýsa mig. She she's not only become a dear friend. Hún er ekki bara orðin góður vinur. But we have great fun ganging up on Benedict. Að við höfum rosalega gaman að ráða saman á Benedict. It's cheap thrills but I get them where I can. Ég ég reyna að ná honum þegar sem ég get. But I figure this is my last time ministering while I'm in Iceland. Er þetta síðasta skipti sem ég þjónusta menn hér núna á Íslandi? We said let it rain. Vi sögðum láttu reglitt falla. So I think that baby needs to come. Þannig að ég held að þetta batturum fram að mæta á svæðið. A little excitement won't hurt us. Smá, svona spenna, skaðar engan. At least not you. Hey, I'm just going to watch. Let's see. But no, I am so appreciative of Didi and just how she works with me. I feel like we're one when we're up here. Og ég er svo þakklátt fyrir dagni og hérna, við finnst þess að við séum eitt að við erum að vinna saman. So I'm very, very grateful. Þannig ég er mjög þakklátt. I understand that when Sippa came up earlier, she was talking about new things. Ég með skildist þegar Sippa kom upp hérna fyrir þá var hún að tala um nýja hluti. And she had no clue about what the Lord spoke to me about this morning. Og hún hafði ekki hugmyndi það sem drottinn að tala til mín var í morgun. And we're going to talk about change and the new thing. Og við ætlum að tala um breytingar og nýja hluti. So we might be hearing in the spirit. This is a beautiful and brilliant woman of God. I instantly fell in love with her and her husband Ali. And the leaders of the church that I met. Beautiful people. Even though you fooled me, I thought you played guitar. 
Þróttur þú varst að gapa með um að það myndi gæti ekki spila á gítar. But we we today we're going to talk about the unchanging God that changes things continuously. Í dag þá tala um óbreytanlega Guð sem breytir hlutum stöðulega. So let's let's go to uh, Luke 5. Nú fara í Lúkas kafla 5. Verses 36 through 39. Vers 36 til 39. I'll read in English and she'll follow. Then he spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one, otherwise the new makes a tear, and also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled, and the wineskins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wine skins, and both are preserved. And no one having drunk old wine immediately desires new, for he says the old is better. Hann sagði þeim einni líkingu, engir yfir bót af nýju fati og lætur á gamalt fat, því að bæði rífur hann þá nýja fatið og bótir að því hæfir ekki hennu gamla. Og engir lætur nýtt vín á gamla belgi, því þá sprengir nýja víni belgina og fyrir niður, en belginu ónýtast. Nýtt vín ber að láta nýja belgi og engir sem drukki hefur gamalt vín vill nýtt því hann segir hefur gamla er gott. Now we know God doesn't change. Við vitum að Guð breytist ekki. He is steadfast, he does not change. Hann er staðfastur og hann breytist ekki. There's this fantastic English word that I don't know if there's a translation from. For það er það stórfuglega ennsk orð sem ég veit ekki hvort sem þið þýðing fyrir. It says God is immutable. <laughs> I did it, yes! <laughs> yeah, you love me. Who knows the miracle killer, Nuna? Cheek thrills. <laughs> Stump the interpreter. <laughs> but it means God is unchanging. As a matter of fact, in Malachi, he says, I am God and I change not. In James 1, he says, you know, the Bible says there's no shadow of turning in him, no variableness at all. Í Jakobsbyrðu þá segir það það er engin skuggi sem að breytir. He is the same God yesterday, today and forevermore. Hann sami Guð í gæra og í dag um alla eilíf. And repeatedly he tells us that in the word of God. Og hann segir endurtekur það stöðulega í orði sinni. He wants us to understand that he is unmovable. Hann vill að við skilju það að það er ekki að það hreyfa. And when I think about it, I wonder why he wanted to make sure we understood that so clearly. Og ég fór að velta þeim af hverju vill að við skiljum þetta svona skýrt. And then I thought about it. Og sem hugsaði út í þetta. Everything else he created changes all the time. Allt annað sem að skapa er breytið stöðulega. Everything that is alive changes. Allt sem er á lífi það breytist. If you are not changing, check yourself, you may be dead. Ef þú ert ekki að breyta þá skalt þú rannsaka sjálf og aðkvöld sér þú eruglega ekki döður. You think about the plants and the trees and the flowers, they change. You think about the, 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 the uh, fish and the whales and, and all the things that are in the ocean, they change constantly. By God, most of the rest of the world have a change in seasons. I'm not sure about Iceland. Ég veit að út um allan heim þá eru mismundi ástiðir, ég veit að þetta er ekki alveg með Ísland. But you can tell that there's a change in seasons. En þú sérð að það er ástiðabreytingar. Everything else changes. Allt annað breytist. But he wants us to understand that when things change, he is still God. En hann vill að við skiljum að þó svo allt annað breytist að hann er þá Guð. Og hann er ekki hægt að hreyfa við honum. He stands alone. Hann stendur einn. And his word stands forever. Og orð hann stendur að eilífu. But he expects us to change with him. En hann gerir ráð fyrir því að við breytist með honum. And when I say with him, with what he releases into the earth. Og þegar ég segi með honum þá er ég að tala um það sem hann leysir út til jarðarinnar. I tell you, even as believers from salvation we're expected to change. Jafnvel sem trúa er frá því að við frelsur þá er ætlast þess að við breytum. In 2 Corinthians 5 it says that we are new creations in Christ. Í öðru kvöldi bryfið fimm þá segir við sem ný sköpun í Kristi. All things pass away and all things become new. Því gamla var það engu sjá nýttur orðið til. That means there's a change that happens with us. Það þýðir að það er breyting sem á sér stað innan með okkur. In Romans 2 it says that we need to be renewing our mind and be transformed. Í Rómeri bryfinu þá segir við þurfum að endur nýja hugafærið og umbreytast. We're expected to change when we're in Christ. Það er gert ráð fyrir að við breytast þegar við erum í Kristi. 
there is always something that needs to change. Það er alltaf eitthvað sem þarf að breytast. One of my favorite scriptures is in 2 Corinthians 3:18. En uppáls setningin minn er í öðru Kólintabréfi kafla 3 vers 18. And it says but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the Lord. En allir við sem með óhjúpað andlit endurspeglum dýr drottins ummyndust til hennar sömu myndar frá dýr til dýrðar þetta gjörir andi drottins. I love that because it's saying as we behold the glory of God. Ég elska þetta að segja þetta segir við höldum dýr 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 Guðs. It's as if we're looking in a mirror. Það er eins og við séum að horfa í spegil. And literally we should see ourselves changing daily to become more like him. Og bókstæla þá segir það að við ættum að horfa horfa í spegil og við breytumst eftir til honum. That when he finishes his work in us when we look at glory all we see is glory. Að þegar hann líkur verkinn með okkur þá sjá eina sem við sjáum er dýr. That's why it's important to let him and Holy Spirit do the work. Kastu þessu mikið að láta hann og heilan anda sjá um verkið. That's what the scripture says that Holy Spirit is the one who changes us. Það er heilar andi sem breytir okkur. The one who renews us. Það er hann sem að endurnýjar okkur. The one who leads us into the new thing. Það sem leiðir okkur inn í nýja hluti. We need to reach for it. Við þurfum að teja okkur eftir því. As a matter of fact, we have a promise for God from God in Philippians 1 and 6. Við erum fyrir heiti í Filippi bréfinu 1 6. He it says that he that's begun the good work in me so sem við hafi góða verkið í mér he will continue it until the day of Christ hann mun halda áfram með það fram að degi Krist thank the lord i don't have to fix myself ég þakka drottna ég þarf ekki að laga mig sjálf that holy spirit is working and he will continue to work until jesus comes back a heila rándir að vinna og hann mun halda áfram að vinna þangað til jesus kemur aftur now just so you know you understand what that means right bara hann nú vitir að þið skilji hvað þetta þýðir if he's got to work in us to Jesus come back, we we some messed up folk. Ef að það að halda hann að vinna í okkur frá okkur þegar Jesu kemur aftur, þá er eitthvað mikið að okkur. We got some issues. Það er eitthvað vandamál hjá okkur. But thank God for Holy Spirit. En við þökkum Guði fyrir heila hann anda. We have to move forward with God. Við verðum að halda áfram með Guði. We have to be transformed. Við þurfum að umbreytast. So what is amazing to me? Það sem er stórfenglegt fyrir mér. We have this unchanging God. Við höfum hann óbreytanlega Guð. He was created us to change. Og hann hérna er sérst þrjálst til að gera breytingar. And most church folk go on ain't changing. Og flestir sem eru í kirkju og segja að ég ætla ekki að breytast. I like things just the way they are. Ég vil að hafa hlutur að nákvæm eins og þeir eru. We resist him. Við stöndu gegn honum. Time is over for that. Tíminn er að enda að við eigum að standa gegn honum. Have you ever heard of Dr. Phil? Yes. Dr. Phil. Hafið þið eitthvað að heyrðu Dr. Phil, já? Dr. Phil has a saying. Dr. Phil, hann hefur svona, hann segir á hvernig hluti. He always says, how's that working for you? Hann segir, hvernig virkar þetta fyrir þig? How is resisting the spirit of God working for you? Hvernig virkar anstæði aldurslóttunum fyrir þig? How is resisting the change he wants to bring about working for you? Hvernig virkar það fyrir að vera í anstöðu við breytingu? Trust it from somebody who knows by from experience is better to work with them than stand still. Treystu því frá manneski sem hefur reynsluna, það er betra að vinda með honum heldur í gegn honum. You know, in all of my, um, <laughs> what some people call craziness, <laughs> there were some wise things that I said when I was a baby Christian. And I said to the Lord, I want to hear your voice. And I want to hear when you speak to me the first time. Because the one thing I realized, if God has to get loud, it gets embarrassing. I'd much rather hear him telling me to change than he has to expose it and then I change. Can we work with God? Can we let Holy Spirit work in us? But you know, church folk are slow to change and I'm not just talking about people in Iceland. There are a whole lot of people in America that don't like to change. Það er hellugur að fólk í bandaríkinu líka sem líkar illa við breytingar. America is the best country in the world, so get that out of your mind. Bandaríkinu er best að tjóð heimstæðin, skulle losa ykkur veitur huganum. But I mean, really, when we travel in different countries, there are people who refuse to change. But now we'll follow the world. 
En við fylgjum heiminum. We'll change fashions. Þá breytum við tískunni. We'll get the updated cars. Við fáum nýjustu bílana. Some people will get all the latest technology. Sumir fá sér alla með nýju tæknina. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying who that is. Ég þekki það nefnir nefn. You know, but we will follow the trends in the earth. And we will follow what's appealing to the flesh. But we have to follow the spirit. And we have to follow the spirit. Well, you know, what, what happens in the world is not going to last. It's not eternal. But what happens in the spirit is. We even expect the world to change. As I'm sure everybody in the whole planet knows that we are up for an election. Having an election in USA. And so little after the heaven of it, there are things that come up in the Man, I wish it was over already. Ég vil að þetta var allt yfirstæðið, uh, já. Our politics is not attractive. Stjórnmálin okkar er ekkert heillandi. But one thing that we know, no matter who's president, en eitt sem við vitum, sama hverju forseti, there will be changes. Það munum við koma breytingar. We expect it. Við búumst við því. If you get a new prime minister, you expect changes. Ef það kemur nýr forsetisráð þeirra, þá býstu við breytingum. If there's a new CEO to a company, you expect changes. Ef það er nýr forstur í hérna fyrirtæki, þá býstu við breytingum. The world has learned to expect things to change. Heimurinn hefur lært að búast við breytingum. But somehow in the church we want things just the same. En ykkur þeir þá inn að kirkjuna þá vil ég hafa hlutuna nákvæmlega eins. Do you know there have been near church splits over the change in the color of the carpet? Vitið þið að það hafa stundum orðið svona kirkju hafa splittast upp í tvend út af breytingunum á litnum og á teppinu? Come on people! Pælið í þessu fólk. That, that is a small thing. Þetta er svona pínlítið hlutur. We have to learn to move with God. Við verðum að læra að hreyfa okkur með Guði. In the church, we have to listen for his voice. We have to be sensitive to his spirit. Because he wants to do the new thing. Let me ask you a question. What if every government on the earth ran it like it was a hundred years ago? Even ran it like it was 50 years ago. Jafnvel stjórnaði eins og var 50 ára. 20 years ago. Fyrir 20 árum síðan segir. You have no fax machine. Þú hefur ekkert fax tæki. No email. Ekki enga tölvupost. Uh, you know the cell phones I, I used to work for a cell phone company. The first cell phone I had was about that big. Eh fastimann ég var einu fyrir fastimann fyrirtæki og fyrsti fastimann var svo cirka svona stór. But 20 years ago they were just emerging. En fyrir 20 árum síðan þá voru þeir bara rétt að koma. Everything was old. Það var allt gamalt. From our perspective now. Frá sjónarhorni okkar núna. So what if we, we operated that way? Hvað ef við myndum starfa þann máta? You know one of the things you might as well know the truth. Það eitt við bota þið mætt alveg vita sannleikan. I get okay three addictions. <laughs> okay, ég er með þrjár útgáfur. We all know Snicker bars are one. Ég við viljum að snikka sem áttana. My iPad, my three iPods, my MP3 player, my laptop. <laughs> Just technology is another. <laughs> iPod and my iPad and my fartolo and my bara tækni yfir höfuð. But my third is I like police television shows. En þriðja sem er líka verið við það eru lögreglu þættir. I like cop shows. Ég elska lögku þætti. I told him last night I'm really a Bond girl, James Bond. Ég var að segja mér gert kvöld að ég er Bond stelpa. I got James stra- Bond. <laughs> Sko Bond stelpan. But I like television shows. Mér líka vel við sjóvanstættir. If somebody's getting arrested, ef það var handtekið þú ert, I'm there. Þá er ég á svæðinu. I have a high need for justice. Ég hef mjög mikla þörf fyrir réttlæti. And so, but it's hard for me to watch older shows. En það er erfitt um að horfa svona eldri þætti. Because back then they didn't have the technology we have now. Þessa þá höfðu þeir ekki sömu tækni og við höfum í dag. So I was watching this old police show. Ég var að horfa á eld gamla show þess lögregluþátt. And they were in this building looking for a criminal. Og þeir voru inni í þessari byggingu og voru að leita glæpamanni. And they needed backup. Og þeir þurftu að fá þess að backup þeir þurftu að fá aðstoð já. You need to watch more police shows. Yeah, I know. Let's stop. Ég þarf að horfa meira á lögregluþættina. But in order for them to get back up, they had to go all the way to the car to call for backup. And til að fá liðsauka þurfti að fara aftur í bílinn til að kalla eftir honum. And I'm screaming at the TV, use your cell phone. 
Og ég hafa öskra sjónvarpið að nota farsíman. They even have wireless technology now where they just hit the thing on their shoulder and can call. Nú er með þannig þannig að þeir eru bara í þau takka öxlin og þá fá þeir liðsauka. I know y'all don't have much crime in, in, in Iceland, but in America we have a little bit. Og ég veit að á Ísland er þetta ekki með mikið að glæpi menn í bandrækið þá, svona er lítið að því. A little bit every few minutes. A little bit, þeir einustu mínútu. What if our police had to have the same gear that they had 20 years ago? Hvernig myndi það vera að lögregla þyrfti að nota sama búnaðan og þið notið fyrir 20 árum síðan? How effective would they be? Hversu miklum árangri myndi þau ná? Because if nothing else, I'm going to tell you, criminals may be stupid, but they're very smart. Ég ætla að segja eitthvað að glæpa með þau getur svolítið heimskir en þau eru samt virkilega klárir. They are constantly looking at ways to improve the way they commit crime. They are constantly looking at ways to improve the way they commit crime. So the police have to be caught up. Now, uh, uh, in July, I celebrated my 50th birthday. Hallelujah. And I've always been a huge fan of 70s music. She was barely born in the 70s. She can't even get it out. And so I had a 70s birthday party. And so we all came dressed like we were in the 70s. We had the wide leg pants, the big afros, one of my friends ironed her hair so she looked like a beatnik. <laughs> we had the hip huggers. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> we, some of, one of my favorite sons, he was dressed like the dad in the Brady Bunch. Brady <laughs> Bunch. And we played 70s music and we just had fun. Now what if we went through everyday life like that? People would look out of place. Because we would look normal to us. But we would be the ones that are offbeat. We would be out of sync. We would be out of sync. And so is much of the church. And rather than admit we're out of sync, we want to cover it up and fix it up. The truth is, I'm 50 years old. I don't care if I cut it off, I pull it down, lift it up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I can tuck it in, stretch it back. I'm still going to be 50. Things are changing. And, and honestly, I don't mind being 50. It's a celebration for me. Okay, but I do mind gray hair, so I wash it right on out. I think when God said, let there be light, right behind that, he said, let there be die. <laughs> but we have to stay in touch with the flow of God's spirit. You see, because no matter no matter what I do physically, I'm still 50. There's a reality to that. And no matter how we say we're worshiping, when God is moved and you haven't, there's a problem. We have to move with the Spirit of God. God is releasing a, a, a new things all the time in the earth. We must embrace these new moves. Isaiah 43 verses 18 and 19. It says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, not now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. 
Rennir þegar ég huga til þess umliðina og gefið þegar ég gætur á því er áður var. Sjá nú hef ég nýtt fyrir stafni, þá tekur þegar að votta fyrir því, sjáið þér það ekki. Ég gerum veg um eiðumörkina og leiði ár um öræfin. Let me tell you something. He says, don't even remember the former things. Hann segir, gleymu gömlu hlutunum. It's dead. Það er dauð. Anything dead needs to be buried. Because if you keep it above ground, it will smell. It will not be attractive. And and God says, hey, for, do not remember the former things, but I create new things. All things are new. But this is what I like. He said, don't you know it? One version says, don't you perceive it? We're created to be prophetic people. Prophetic people. When we read Acts 2 and Joel 2, we understand that we're prophetic people. We should be able to sense the move and the changes in the spirit. And we can say, whoa, God, okay, you ready to do something new. We have to be sensitive to the things of God. He says in, 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 that, in that, that scripture, he says, I'll even make rivers in the desert. River, rivers in the desert. That would be a new thing. Where I live, I'm landlocked. I grew up with the beach. But when I moved to Georgia, I'm landlocked. And I used to say to God, Georgia would be perfect if we had a beach. Then God started doing funny things in the weather. I said, never mind. I'm okay with things just the way they are. <laughs> God, when he does something new, he wants us to embrace it. He wants us to run into it. He gives us new and increasing revelation of who he is. Now hear me when I say God never changes. His word never changes. But our revelation of it does. Because he releases greater insight to us. But you have to pursue him to get it. I look back, I, I, I was born again like 23 years ago or so. Everybody say thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And, and, and in that time, what I understood about the word of God and what I understand now is like, wow. There's scripture that I read as a, as a new believer. Now I'm, God is still teaching me revelation about it. So as God's people, we have to pursue Holy Spirit to get the new revelation. To understand what he's saying in this hour. One of the benefits I have of traveling into different countries is to know what God is saying. And I can hear a word in America. I can go to South Africa and hear somebody preaching that same word. Go into Uganda, they're preaching that same word. Go to Jamaica, somebody's preaching that same word. Go to Jamaica, somebody's preaching that same word. Go to Jamaica, somebody's preaching that same word. We're not on email sending that word around. We're not on email sending that word around. The Holy Spirit is releasing a new deposit. Hey, hey, Lord, I'm going to lay something new. So we need to open our spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So we need to open our spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So we need to open our spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So we need to open our spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So we need to open our spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So we need to open our spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So we need to open our spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So we need to open our spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So we need to open our spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So we need to open our spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit of God is
Guð er ekki að segja, hmm, ég held að þið þurfa að fá að vita þetta núna. What he's saying is for what they're facing right now, I need to bring new revelation to Heldur it. Heldur að segja, það sem þið eru að mæta er núna, þið þurfa nýja opinberi fyrir það. So I don't care what you're going through right now. Alveg sannum hvort að fara í gegnum núna. You, you see God, he'll give you a new revelation of his word to apply to that situation. Þú leita Guð svo hann kemur með nýja opinberi til þess að eiga þess að kringustæður. He don't want you sitting there moaning and groaning, woe wo, wo about what you're going to do. Hann vill ekki að sitja þetta og vælur og skælur um hvað ætlar að gera. He wants you to hear the spirit. Hann vill að þú heyrir í andanum. And know how to apply the word to the situation. Og viti hvað þú tekur orðið og setur það inn í kringustæðunar. To He's releasing new revelation. Hann er að leysa út nýjar opinberanir. About two years ago. Fyrir um það bil tveimur árum. And to be quite honest, it was because another minister had fallen from grace, he had sinned. Þetta var út af því að það var annar þjótt sem að, hérna, fjalli sinnd. It was not even somebody I knew personally, but it broke my heart. Þetta var ekki eitthvað sem ég þekkti persónlega, þetta braut hjarta mitt. And I said, God, what happened? Ég sagði, hvað gerðist? You know, I just believe that when people accept Christ, they really want to know him. Ég trúi því að þegar fólk tekur á móti Kristi þá vill það virkilega fá kynnast um En það gerist þegar maður hrindur okkur af hérna veginum Og Guð sagði svolítið mjög einfalt við mig Hann sagði hann var ekki, hann fekk ekki rétta kennslu See, discipleship and Bible study are two different things. Það er sikkur hlutur að vera í biblíu kennslu og að vera sérst Being discipled and going to Bible school is two different things. Að fara í Bibliuskóla og vera sem sagt gerður á lærisveini eru tveir mismöndur hlutir. Discipleship comes through relationship. Að verða lærisveit kemur í gegnum samskipti. And so, and with that, the Lord just birthed in my heart this fervent desire to disciple more. Og þetta komið sér brennandi þrá í hjarta mitt að gera fleiri að lærusvinum. Within a couple of months I was in Iceland again with Ron and he was saying the same thing. Og nokkru mánuði setna þá var ég hitti aftur Ron og þá var hann að segja nákvæmlega sama hlutin. Sometimes it seems like every week I get an article or a prophetic word about people being discipled. Og mér finnst eins og það sé mjög reglega sem er að fá spátulegt orðið að greina um fólk sem er að verða lærusvinu. Discipleship has been around since the day of, days of Jesus and the twelve disciples. It's not new. He's just bringing new revelation to it. And saying that's what we need in this hour. We gotta know how to tap into the spirit. To hear what God is saying. And let, and let me say this. You have to have a prophetic person in your worship team. God releases new sounds. And let me be clear with you, not everybody who's singing, saying they're singing for Jesus actually is. The song may be motivational. It may be inspirational, but it's not godly. And we need God-centered worship. We need Christ in the middle. But even with that, we need the new sound from heaven. And it's, uh, for being prophetic, it's very important to me to have new sounds. I went into this church to preach. I promise you they're lovely people. But I didn't hear a song that was made since the 1980s. It was lovely worship, but it did not inspire because it was not the sound of the season. We have to hear the sounds of heaven. We have to know what God is saying and what God is doing. We are losing a current generation because we refuse to hear their sound. See this generation coming up now? They got attitude and they not even black. You got it late. <laughs> 
But I mean, really, they have attitude. They are sick of the fickleness of the adults around them. They have a passion and a fire. And they have a sound to match it. And we're saying, mm, I don't think that's God. Mm, I don't hear God in that. Your grandmama didn't hear God in the music we just played here today. There is a new sound for every generation. And we need to embrace their sound and let them develop that sound. And guess what? If you stay in the spirit, you might begin to like their sound. We want to move with God, not stand still. In Acts 7.39, Stephen is talking. He's about to be stoned. And he's in their face. And he says, you're like your forefathers. Moses brought him out. But their hearts were left in Egypt. Let your spirit move with God. God is bringing about changes in this house. You have to move with the spirit of God. God wants to do new things. We got to move with the spirit of God. And I'm closing with this, but when we go back to the scripture we read about those wineskins. He says you can't put new wine in old wineskins. Because the wine will begin to mature and begin to expand. And it will burst the old wineskin. What he's saying is I created you to change. He created our spirit man to change. So when he pour out that new wine we can receive it. And not explode. Now can't you just see me go... That's not the explosion I'm talking about. The explosion is you, you, you get entrenched in a religious spirit. The, the explosion is you get bitter because things are not the way you like it. The explosion is you move from the front seat to the back seat because you just can't stand it anymore. The explosion is they change Change your little thing that you do in the church and didn't ask your permission. Your own wine skin. Oh wine skin. You need to be renewed by the Spirit of God. When you drink of the new wine, I don't care what you're facing. The spirit of God just tastes good to you. He gives you the strength to stand and face everything that's in front of you. He open your eyes to new strategies to how to deal with it. And he gives you the ability to not only digest the wine but grow with the wine. I'm an old wino. I'm an old wino. A wine drinker. <laughs> so, but guess what? If I'm drinking a new wine, don't bring me the old wine. We don't like the old wine anymore. It may have matured. It may have a sweet taste to it. It may be smooth going down. But if God is not in it, I don't want it. I think we need a little bit of tartness in our wine to keep us on our edge. To keep us pursuing God. To keep us hungering after the things of God. We 
have to embrace and and strongly desire the relationship with Holy Spirit. Við verðum að gefa náð og og þrá að öllum krafti eftir samfélagi við heilagan anda. I try to remind myself daily that I'm flesh and dirt. Ég reyna að minna mig á það daglega að ég sé hold og og mold. I love when the Bible says we're nothing but but grass. Um, við líkar Biblía segir að það sé ekkert nema gras. We're a mist that will blow away. Og við a mist that will blow away. Og við sést það hérna bara gufa sem að mun vera blásin í burtu. It doesn't matter. Það skiptir ekki máli. I don't matter. Ég skipti ekki máli. The Christ in me matters. Kristur innan með mér skipti máli. So I don't care about 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 what I get, you know, what happens with me. Mér er alveg sama hvað kemur fyrir mig. Because I know if I stay in the flow of the spirit, God will take good care of me. Þessi veit að ég að ég er kjör í flæði andast þá mun Guð sjá um mig. So I say to you today. Þannig ég segi við þig í dag. I don't care the situation. Mér er sama hvað kringumstæðurnar eru. I don't care the problems. Mér er sama hvað vandamálin eru. I don't care how difficult it seems. Alveg sama hversu erfitt það virðist vera. Get in the presence of God. Stígðu í nærveru Guðs. Let him give you the new wine. Leyfðu honum að gefa þér nýja vín. Let him change this wine skin. Receive the deposit and move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Thank you, Father. Even as we were worshiping, I just really sense that we need to pray for, for um, some people to move forward. Það fannig fyrir að við þurfum að byrja frá ákveðnu fólki sem að þyrfti að fara að halda áfram. See sometimes when things get tough we get stuck. Þannig að oft þegar hlutinni verða erfið þá festust við. But I like the Holy Spirit who will take you by the collar and pjú. En mér líka verður heilar anda sem tekur í kraðan áður og ítið þér áfram. Pull you forward. Tósa þig áfram. And so tonight we're believing. Þannig kvöld þá erum að trúa. That God is going to bring you into the new thing. Að Guð ætlar að færa þinni nýja hlutina. Corporately as a body. But also individually in your lives. We can't afford to be stuck in any area. God wants to move us forward. Thank you, Father. Um, I think I can't really see because of the light, but the worship leader that was standing on the far end, is that you right there? Can you come forward, please? 